What's going on guys, it is Jono and today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite seven trends in automation that you should be applying every single day moving forward. These are gonna be massive in 2025. They're gonna save you so much time. And when I mean save you so much time, I don't mean like, hey, you know, it might save you 15 minutes a day. I'm like literally like for me, it saved me the equivalent of like 40 people full time. It's more work than I could ever do in a freaking day or probably even a month. So with that being said, let's dive into these right now. I'm going to start off with the easiest one here. I want to actually share with you a example. Now, I actually coined this myself and I'm calling this lifecycle automation. This is what I did with my business that allowed me to replace myself from a job. And I went from working 14 hours a day down to literally, I want to say maybe like 10, 15 minutes every single day. And it's coined lifecycle automation because you just map out every process you take a client through in the lifecycle that they have with your company. And you say, how can I automate this? So for example, let's say that somebody is a new lead on uh, that inquiry as a new lead, right? So we can go ahead. Uh, that just irks me that I spelled my name wrong there. And we'll fill out this, this form, right? And we have this client in our CRM right now. This is go high level, right? And the first thing that's going to happen is as soon as they inquire, it's literally going to call me. So I'm going to pick up the phone here. You can see that my phone is ringing here. I'm going to pick this up and put it on speaker. Hey, Jono. Jono Catlip has inquired about services. Please press any key on the keypad to be connected into a call with Jono. So if I went ahead and I connect into that call, me and the client would be on a phone call pretty much immediately. Let's circle back into the CRM. If that call was not picked up, then it's going to send off a text message and an email and it's going to say, hey, Jono, it's Jono from Jono Catliff. That is way too many Jonos. This is getting out of control right now. I just saw that you filled out a form on our website looking for whatever services. This is blank just because this is test information. I'd love to help. Are you free to chat now? And then they, go, you can, they can go ahead and book an appointment, right? Same kind of deal with the email. You can just nurture them down a particular email sequence so that the goal here is to book an appointment. And when that person's like, hell yeah, I want to jump on a call, they're going to come to an appointment widget like this. They're going to pick a time, right? They're going to fill in all of their information here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my information and schedule that meeting. And as soon as that meeting scheduled, you could be like, hey, Jono, manually, I'm typing this email out being like, hey, I booked this appointment or whatever and just confirming it. Or you could automate that. Now, I'm just going to pan over to myself because you can see here that um, I just essentially sent myself an email. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's essentially saying, hey, we're confirming the time or whatever. If you want to reschedule, if you need to cancel it, you can do that. Both of those are automated. All of this stuff, 100% automated. You don't have to do anything, right? So that's really cool. Now let's take it a step further and say, I jump on the call with this person, everything goes well, and I want to, you know, you know, essentially send them over a proposal, thank them for their time. That all sounds good to me. All I have to do here is just let's say finish off a sales call. So I'm just gonna say, you know, hypothetically, I finished off the sales call. I'm gonna add them into this manually. Obviously this wouldn't be manual, but it's gonna say, hey Jono, it's Jono, great chatting once again. Thank you for your time. I just sent over the contract and the invoice. Let me know if you have any questions, right? So these are just breaking up all the tasks you have to do for an individual client step-by-step step, and then automating it. Now, this is pretty simplistic because it's like just emails and text messages and phone calls right now, but you can get more advanced. You could generate a contract. Like this is the exact contract we generate for our clients. There's over 150 different custom fields that really go into this. So it gets pretty nuts, pretty crazy. And this is like the tip of the iceberg. What I'm showing you guys here is literally maybe one or two percent of all the things that I can automate. And just in case you guys are wondering, I, um, if you guys do want a system like this, I just released the system. It got my uh, company up to seven figures. I'm giving it away completely for free. I do charge people uh, five figures every single month just to do the same kind of automation. But if you are interested, the links down below, you can go to my sign up page for go high level, download this. It's free to get started. You do have to pay go high level $97 a month. And yes, I do get an affiliate commission on that. But if you guys don't like it, you can cancel and there is a free trial. This is kind of what it looks like. Like on the inside, there's going to be videos walking through everything with descriptions on how to get started in the blueprints. All you have to do is just uh, download the blueprints and it's going to pretty much work out a box 
out of the box for most people uh, that have a business in this, uh, like a service-based business. Now, the second trend here is using artificial intelligence <laughs> in automation, right? And there's so many, so many, so many use cases for this, but I'm just gonna give an example of an AI assistant here. So let's say, and I'm actually just gonna go ahead and run this workflow so you guys can see it. And this is make.com. I do have blueprints, my top 10. If you guys sign up for this, you can get in the description below. But let's say that you have an AI assistant that you want it to complete tasks for you. You could say, um, you, you could get it to do really anything you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and request something from it. Hey, can you please send an email to John O'Catliff telling them that we're good to go for our call tomorrow at 2 p.m. and I look forward to chatting with them then. And I'm gonna send that message off in Slack. And in real time, what's gonna go, what's gonna happen behind the scenes is we're gonna receive that message, we're gonna transcribe it using AI, and then it's gonna go down the right AI agent path and it's gonna execute on the task that we wanted it to do. Now, in this case, we're just creating a draft email. It's gonna notify us that that email or that task has been created back in slack.com. You don't have to use Slack. You can use Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, um, text messaging, whatever the case is, right? There's a million and one things you can do, but you can literally create an AI agent that does whatever task that it is that you need it to be done. This is just, I think, seven here, actually six, but <laughs> you can do hundreds or thousands, right? So this is just one example of how to use AI in automation. Now, the next and the third trend that I wanna talk about is document processing using artificial intelligence. Now, the cool thing is, is we live in a time where we can literally just strip information from documents like a PDF or like a Google Sheet or like an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. We can just take that information and analyze it and then deliver results back. So for example, in a make.com situation like this, what's going on is we're just waiting for emails, right? And when those emails come in, we're gonna use AI to literally strip that email of uh, the attachments in that email. So we're gonna come into an email like this, we're gonna take an attachment, right? We're going to literally grab that information, we're gonna process it using AI, we're gonna spit it out in like a uh, Google Sheet like this so we can see the price and the tax and the subtotal and all that kind of stuff. The cool thing is, is you know, it doesn't have to stop there. You could add this into QuickBooks and automate a huge part of your accounting process. Now, you don't just have to do receipts. That's a cool thing, but there's a lot of other applications for this. I'm sure you have some ideas in your head on how you can implement this in your business. But another one is recruiting, right? So in my business, I get hundreds, well, probably more like thousands of people applying every single uh, month to jobs that I have. And obviously, this is a ton of work. It is a ton of work. And if you're like me, um, I like getting the top 1% of candidates, which means I have to go through at least 100, maybe 200, maybe 300 people just to find one person that I'm super happy with. Now, that's a lot of work, that's a lot of resumes, that's a lot of reading, and something like this will be able to speed up that time because you could essentially have an AI system that takes that document that we're essentially converting into um, text. And then we're going to create like a 10 point basis where we um, essentially rate that person like how much experience do you have with this role? Do you have any relevant degrees? How's the spelling and grammar and punctuation? What's your experience in that particular role? Um, all of that kind of stuff you can tell AI to do and then you can generate a response, right? So it really allows you to remove yourself from the process. That's super freaking cool. Now, the next thing here is that um, you can automate AI chatbots. Now, this is freaking awesome, right? Um, but I'm not talking about just like ChatGPT or whatever. I'm talking about putting that puppy on steroids. And what I mean by that is like connecting that chatbot into tens or hundreds or thousands of applications. Now, in this case, we're going to take a chatbot. This is go high level. This is kind of the same CRM that we were using before. And we're going to have a real time AI conversation with somebody. And we're gonna connect that into this make.com scenario here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run this, okay? And coming back in here, I'm going to just message this AI bot. Now, nothing crazy. It's just gonna reply saying, hey, you know, what's going on, right? <clears throat> and once it does that, I'm just gonna say, you know, butterflies, rain, obviously not. Um, can you please send me over my invoice so I can pay it, please? And then 
Uh, and of course, I always say please, even if it's AI, just because I'm Canadian. But we're going to wait for it to reply again. And it's just going to ask us for our email because at this point in time, it doesn't know who I am. There's no unique identifier to connect me to a client in the CRM or to actually email that off. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to provide my email here. <laughs> Now in the back end, you can actually see in real time this conversation happening. You can see everything going on and it's going to send over that particular message here. And in the background, we have run this scenario, right? And this is essentially pulled the client in Pandadoc, it's grabbed their particular contract and then it sent it back to go high level so that we can send a live chat back to the person. And here is a link to that document. Obviously, he should be flipped the other way around. So that would need to be fixed. But here is that exact document that we have. It's being sent in real time. Then that person can go ahead, sign, pay, all of that kind of stuff pretty much immediately. So that's a really cool use case for automation um, in 2025, right? To supercharge your chatbots. Now, the next thing here, actually, before we move on to the next thing, I want to showcase the exact same thing that you can do. But instead of using a chatbot, you could use a phone call. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the scenario. It's using a software called Vappy and it's going to call myself. You can see here I'm receiving a call. I'm going to pick it up. And that's not good customer service. Let's go ahead and run that again. <laughs> You're getting a zero out of five for that. That was not a good performance there. Hello? Hello, this is Ava. How oh. may I assist you today? Hey Ava, do you mind just sending over that invoice for me so that I can pay um, the deposit right now? It sounds like you're looking for an invoice to make a deposit payment. That's correct. Can you please confirm the specific... Great, I can help with that. To ensure I send the correct invoice, could you please provide me with the invoice number or any other relevant details? Yeah, it's under my email, which is johnocatliff at gmail.com. Thank you for providing your email address. I will send the invoice to john.catalyst at gmail.com shortly if you need any further assistance. Okay, so perfect. Let me know. Um, it was actually johnocatliff at gmail.com, not john.catliff. So j-o-n-o-c-a-t-l-i-f-f -F -F at gmail.com. I will send the invoice to j-o-n-c-a-t-l-i-f-f -F at gmailmail.com shortly. If you need any further assistance, feel free to let me know. So the email is j is in Jerry, o is in orange, n is in Nancy, o is in orange, c is in car, a is in attic, t is in tango, l as, l as, l as in life, i is in igloo, f is in forest, f is in forest at gmail.com. Got it. I will send the invoice to j-o-o-n-c-a-t-l-i-f-f at gmailmail.com shortly. If you need any further assistance, feel free to let me know. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. So that's how you could easily set up phone AI assistants or agents to essentially call your contacts on your behalf. It's not perfect. As you can see there, it kind of screwed up the email. But let's be honest, every time I call the bank, I'm practically screaming on the other end, Jay! Oh, was an orange <laughs> every single time. And it's usually a 10 minute process anyway. So not perfect. It can get better, but it will get better. And this is the worst it's ever going to be. Obviously with this kind of stuff, guys, just make sure if you're using phone AI assistance that you're ethical about it, because obviously this can be used for really good things, but it can also be used for really bad things. So I always like just throwing in that. Okay. And the next trend to look out for in 2025 is robotic process automation. Now, this is a really cool trend, um, but essentially how it works is that what's going to happen is a robot's going to just look at what you're doing. It's going to analyze you clicking buttons, you processing information. Say you log into an app, you log in your Gmail, you send an email or whatever, and it's going to recognize what the buttons are that you're clicking, the keystrokes, all of that kind of stuff. And then it can repeat that behavior over and over and over again. So it is automation, but it's a different type of automation. Put more simply in explaining it like a five-year-old chat, but she just says, um, you have a friend that's a little robot and um, essentially you want to open a bunch of files, copy something from each one and put into another file. Doing this might take a lot of time, but you, if you tell your friend, your RPA friend, what to do once, it can remember what to do and just do it over and over again, just like magic. Um, 
so yeah, it's it's super cool stuff. Now um, you can create a lot of advanced, a lot of customized workflows, but here's just one example. We're using a platform called UiPath here, and we're doing something very similar where we're extracting documents from our Gmail account, and then we are going to push those into Google Drive. So this is the default kind of scenario that I have set up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run test. And it's gonna give logs, it's kind of like almost web scraping when I see it, but it, it, it's cool, right? It's going through, it's logging every single process and yeah, it's gonna push that into this particular folder here so that I have, for example, all of my bills, right? This is a great way where you can strip all of your documents, put them into a folder, all of that kind of stuff. So that's really, really cool. This is something to look out for. This does integrate into make.com as well. So if you guys are interested in doing this, you could literally programmatically start this from make.com. Now, the last two things that I'm gonna talk about, point number six and point number seven in trends for 2025 when it comes to automation are a bit contradictory to one another. So just keep that in mind. But this one is about humanizing automation and AI. <clears throat> so. I know that there's this big push to, you know, essentially um, just get results as fast as possible. Use automation AI to remove yourself completely. And and it's great, right? It's, it's awesome. But I do believe strongly that there needs to be some level of human intervention in most of these, not all, but a lot of these workflows, right? Because for me, the reality is, is when I publish content online, for example, I would want to make sure that I do a quick double check, whether it's me or somebody on my team, so that I'm not pushing out things that I wouldn't be proud of or that doesn't reflect or represent my brand the way I want it to. So in this instance, you know, I have this workflow. Just to summarize it up, we're generating um, AI clones, right? So here's kind of this video. I'm going to play it. Imagine taking a vacation while your business runs itself. Sounds too good to be true. With make.com comma, you can automate 95% of your operations. From sales to customer service. <laughs> make.com comma. I love how it just specifies the comma. Like, you know, this is part of the sentence. It needs to be specified. It's like, if you're reading this, <laughs> you need to know this is a freaking comma right here. Um, anyway, so obviously there's some mistakes in there and I probably wouldn't want to push that out entirely just by itself. So with a workflow like this, what's going on here is we're breaking up into three segments and we're creating these videos automatically, right? But we have checkpoints. So the first thing is, is we're going to generate the script. So um, here's kind of like what the script is, we generate it. And if you read that and you're like, that sounds awesome, you can click this video checkbox here and it's gonna generate the video. And taking a step back too, to create the content, you click this checkbox for the content based on the idea and this checkbox will create the script based on the idea. And then this video checkbox will actually generate this particular video, right? So this is creating the content, this is creating the video, different paths. And then the final path is just posting on your favorite platforms like LinkedIn, like X, like Instagram, right? Um, but yeah, there's some human intervention there so that you're only posting something that you're proud to post. And the last thing here that I kind of want to go over is hyper automation, where essentially it's the inverse and it is contradictory, but I think like the pinnacle of automation and AI and the direction, like the, the logical conclusion, if you will, is where all of these different processes are stitched together into one. So you might have some form of automation that's like maybe a chatbot that's receiving messages. You're automating the process of stitching together multiple applications to get a response. You're using AI and deep learning to be able to really understand the syntax, grab the right information, process it, deliver a coherent response, push it back to the end user, and then be able to take that information, store it into a database, and be able to train that model over time so that every single single process that it iterates through, it gets better over time, right? So that's kind of, I think, the logical conclusion or the end game of where we're going. So thanks guys for watching if you made it this far. Um, if you found value in this video, please hit that subscribe button down below. It helps letting me know that I'm doing a good job. If you do have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. If you guys are interested in those particular blueprints, you can just go ahead and download them. There's gonna be a link in the description for 
for this. And then you can just go at your own cadence and walk through implementing all of these. It did take me five years. Did I did end up spending millions of dollars testing this. So uh, I'd like to believe it's at least pretty good. So yeah, just let me know your thoughts on that. And thanks for watching once again. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.